Welcome back to Streamers Reloaded, my name is Tom and let's get right into the news and we begin today with a bit of a record breaking donation. Now this one comes from last Thursday which at the time seemed completely fake. So what happened? Well the streamer BRLK Games received a 900,000 Brazilian Reyes donation which the clip with the donation got 150,000 views. In the clip the streamer did not react and when the donation is converted it equals 150,000 euros or 173,000 dollars. So of course it seems fake or some kind of glitch. That was until later on when the streamer in question confirmed the donation was real. This is a translation so it's not perfect but it reads, The reaction of when I saw the value of the donation, I thought it was a bug or fake, then I saw the money came in and it will not be refunded. The value was high because the MLK is from Europe and sent 147,000 euros in the conversion. That value remained, I will never tired to thank you. Which is posted alongside the actual reaction when the streamer realised it was real. Você mudou a minha vida, graças às suas lives, eu não me suicidei, minha depressão foi curada. Olha o valor dessa porra, mano. Olha o valor dessa porra, mano. Olha o valor disso, mano. Família, 900 mil, mano. Well, as it's now confirmed to be real, there's actually a bit more of a backstory to this one. A few websites picked this up and shared that the initial fundraiser in the bottom right is to raise money to support his family. One website says he lost his father at the tender age of two, but his mother shielded him from that fact until he was five. Diagnosed with clinical depression, he has had to shoulder the crushing weight of supporting his family since he was merely 15. Juggling work and school, Leonardo had attempted suicide as well. To top it all, his brother suffers from schizophrenia and has several problems problems in his heart valves. Combining all the medication, both for him and his brother, makes up for quite an expenditure. It's understandable how much his family needed money. So this donator decided that this streamer had changed his life, so the donator turned around and returned the favour. Next up we got one from the popular rapper Logic, who last week announced he was retiring after the release of his latest album. And well since that we come on to this Monday, and Logic has announced he signed with Twitch with a 7 figure deal. Well that was on Monday and Logic has since streamed, of which his first live stream on Twitch did incredibly well with an average viewership of 80,000 viewers and a peak viewership of 97,000 over the course of two hours. Now that is incredible but the whole point of this stream was a music based stream so a lot of his music viewers were more inclined to watch. As Logic has retired from music whether his future streams do as well we will just have to wait and see. Following on to Monday we have a ban from the very popular streamer Soda Pop In. On Monday Soda received a suspension and made a video on YouTube about it. If you haven't seen the video yet I will leave a link to it in the end cards because it is very funny and very sarcastic but in the video Soda does explain that he was playing VR chat and went into a room called the Golden Corral Sex Dungeon. While in this room he was having some explicit conversations with a friend and due to the room Soda Poppin was in at one point someone came over and started rubbing on him and so of course Soda received a ban for sexually suggestive content. The ban was only 24 hours so as of right now Soda is unbanned. Next up we have two very big bans from two very prominent members in their respective communities. First we have one from the streamer Hashinshin who last week had a statement written about him titled I was groomed by Hashinshin when I was 15. As well another user wrote one titled My experience with Hashinshin when I was 17 years old. Now we don't need to go into either one of these but to summarise these two girls said Hashinshin had mainly inappropriate conversations with them when they were this and this age. But we don't need to go into either one of these because we come on to this Wednesday and Hashinshin has actually confessed on Twitter saying I'm sorry to all my fans I've let down. I did engage in inappropriate conversations with teenage women. This isn't who I want to be and although I've made many strides already to better myself as a person, I'm going to continue to better myself in the future. The two girls both have true stories, although because of their severity matters I want to apologise to Maya most of all. I have talked to the other girls mentioned and will not include their names as the spotlight has put a bad shine on their internet life. I want to clarify to anyone I did not send nudes to any girl below 18 and I have not asked for nudes from any girl below 18. I have not seen any of these women in person please don't exaggerate the stories for dramatic impact as it just makes it harder to apologise for. And well after this confession came out confirming those two previous statements, very shortly after, Hashinshin has been banned off the Twitch platform. Given these statements, this one is most likely permanent. Then for the second streamer we have Zero. For this one we go back a few weeks, a bunch of people in the Smash community were being exposed for sexual misconduct. And well, Zero decided to write a statement about all of these people and one user quoted that statement on Twitter saying, this is taking me 
tremendous deliberation, but I'm sorry, Zero. You were showing me explicit Craigslist ads for sex workers and hentai on the big screen and constantly harassing me at the Sky House when I was 15. After this, the very next day he was dropped from Tempo Storm, and similar to Shin Shin, we now come on to this week and Zero has been banned off the Twitch platform. Now, Zero was one of these streamers that has moved over to Facebook, but his account has still been banned off Twitch. As well, since this has happened, Zero has gone completely dark on Twitter, deleting his entire account history. On to Wednesday, Mixer is officially gone. Now, if you go on the website, it states as of July 22nd, the Mixer service has closed. The Facebook gaming community invites all Mixer viewers and streamers to check out fb.gg, where you can start streaming or keep watching the amazing Mixer streamers who've decided to make Facebook gaming their new home. So this was expected to happen, but RIP Mixer. Next up, we have a new installment of Groscore versus his community. Recently, Groscore has been spending a lot of time with his daughter on stream, and while one of the Groscore community members has has decided he's not looking after his daughter well enough. So Ali shared through his Twitter, I've got some really bad news and I have to share. I'm being investigated by these social services and won't continue the streams with my daughter as some people are trying to ruin me being a single parent. Thanks for watching and sharing. This is posted alongside a video, so here is a snippet of that. Someone has contacted the social services uh, and reported me to social services saying that I'm an unfit parent and they're pretty much trying to get my daughter taken away from me. Um, I've been reported for neglect of my own child because she enjoys being on her iPad and they're saying that I abused my daughter mentally and physically and someone out there really wants my daughter taken away from me. Don't ask me why. Well, after this video appears in the responses, a few people are against Groscore here. The top response reads, Gonna be real with you, Chief. You woke your daughter up with your stream. She covers her ears when you're streaming as you're too loud. She's literally addicted to the tablet. You swear in front of her constantly. Seems like you care more about your own stream than your daughter when you're live. Now, there are some people here defending Groscore with the next response reading, To be honest, I don't really like you, but that's effed. Hope it goes well. So as Groscore said, he won't be doing any more streams with his daughter anymore because of this event. There are a few more more responses, here are a few of those on screen if you want to read them, but it does look like Groscore could lose his own daughter here to the social services. Coming on to Saturday, we have a ban from the recently popular streamer Ginny TTY, who received a ban for a clip that is now over one month old. This one comes from when The Last of Us 2 came out, and a lot of streamers were playing it and sharing their discontent with the game. So in the following clip, Ginny shares her thoughts about the character Abby, and goes about it in such a way that it caused a two-week suspension. Here's the clip. Joel, like seriously, I don't want to look at this transgender anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? What, Jenny? You guys call me transgender. Same fucking shit. You guys call her fridge. Oh my god. You know, I have. No patience. So in the clip, Ginny does not like playing the character Abby and uses the term transgender in a way that can be perceived as an offence. And it appears that is how Twitch themselves has taken it. So upon receiving this ban, Ginny shared through her Discord, I just got a two week ban for calling Abby transgender during The Last of Us 2. So called hateful comment. After the ban was received, Ginny then went to Twitter to give some further context as to why she made those comments on stream. A tweet longer was posted that reads, I've received a suspension on Twitch for commenting on a character called Abby in The Last of Us 2. I understand taking the clip out of context, it does sound really bad. I was not interested in Abby's story during the game. I thought it was boring and exhausting, so I just wanted to say I don't want to look at her anymore. But I put it in the wrong way. I wasn't 100% sure if she was transgender or not, and I saw a lot of people talking about it. So without thinking, I thought it was okay to use the word transgender to describe her. I sincerely apologize for anyone who was offended by it, and I promise that in the future, I will be more educated and careful with what I say and do on stream. So of course, was that worthy of a two week suspension? Well, as it turns out, six hours after that explanation came out, Ginny's ban was lifted. So was the clip ban worthy? I will leave that up to you. But as of right now, Ginny's ban has been lifted. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. I want to thank you all for watching as normal. Please stay safe and I hope to see you in the next one.